Hey, peace, love, and light, Scorpios. Welcome to First Eye Visions. I am Q, and I am here to do a general reading for you all. I will, everybody has been blissed. I will, everybody is feeling well and is not getting too tripped up on their words during this Mercury retrograde. I will, everybody's mechanical devices aren't glitching on them. Um, definitely um, wanted to do a reading just to check in see what's happening what's coming and going out going on with my beloved scorpios um for all of you who are new welcome my name is q i am a scorpio as well and i am clear audience so you will hear music in the background and those messages do tend to blend in beautifully with the reading um this will be a general reading so that means eat the fish spit out the bones if it doesn't apply let it fly by and this is also timeless. So whenever you find yourself clicking on the video, that was the divine timing meant for you to do so. Now let's pay more homage to the ancestors and the elements. I do call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth mother guy, universe source, the divine, most High God, our Creator, to shine a powerful message of love and light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala and Mama Oya to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. I call also upon Archangel Mikael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Metatron to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards so that I can pick up a clear, intuitive message for my beloved Scorpios. And so it is, so mote it be. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So right now we have Sade um, playing like a tattoo. And um, so I inst instantly heard scars. So some people, um, maybe some of you got matching tattoos or went and got tattoos with someone of significance, whether it's a friend, a lover, maybe even a family member, a close relative. Um, maybe some of you feel like you were you know you're carrying the scars uh similar to a tattoo you know you're carrying these scars around like a tattoo and so we have teaching and learning on the bottom of the deck that i will be using this is the numerology so yeah with this teaching and learning i do get a sense that uh some of you could have been in friendship dynamics family dynamics love ship connections uh where you were not only learning but you were being taught by the other person and just as I was picking up on intuitively, perhaps you are carrying the scars of that connection, that relationship, that love ship, that experience around with you. Um, but it was meant for you to go through this because you've learned a lot. Um, this 57 breaks down to three and the number three really deals with the Empress energy. That is the vibration of the Empress energy. <laughs> And even the emperor, you know, empress, empress, you know, empress, emperor, even though that's number four, it's still that divine feminine, divine masculine uh, vibration. Um, it also deals with the uh, solar plexus, root, uh, the solar plexus chakra. And so I feel like, you know, a lot of you have learned to become stronger through whatever those dynamics were. Um, a lot of you learned to stand in your power. You know, a lot of you have had to heal from some of the experiences that you have endured within that relationship. Um, right now we have Jay-Z, it's called Terra and it's featuring Biggie Smalls. So yeah, some of you were perhaps like, I'm, I'm hearing the word uh, traumatized more so than terrified. Um, but maybe there was something that really scared you. Maybe someone held a mirror up to you and, and it caused fear of some sort. Um, but let's tap in, tune in, so divine spirit. Let's do some quick shuffling. Let's tap in. So like a tattoo. Let's, let's see what comes in. That was the first song. Opening up the reading. All right. Divine spirit of love and light. Let's go ahead, cut the deck. I did do a pre-shuffle off camera. So at the bottom of the deck will be the energy. And so we have parenting. And so um, many of you could be co-parenting. I do feel like because this is the number 63, 
um, which reduces to nine. There's been some changes. There's been some shifts, perhaps, within a household. Um, this yellow is the vibration um, of the solar plexus as well, uh, which is that number three, you know. So I do feel like there's been some healing. You know, maybe there's some opportunity that's going to present itself um, pertaining perhaps co-parenting with the other parent maybe they've been absent and maybe there's going to be a window of opportunity to co-parent maybe you've already been there did that and the two of you are not seeing eye to eye because this is called terror I feel like you know perhaps this is more so focusing on the child uh, because initially we had teaching and learning and now we have parenting so I feel a lot of you are you know being the first teachers that you are which are the parents to your children um, you know when you're teaching and learning that you're guiding your children you're instilling in them values morals um, and you're giving them you know almost like the blueprint to life helping them to learn to navigate it eventually uh, so for the parenting I do feel like you're focusing really on parenting on being mothers on being fathers um, you know maybe there's this this gap that you're trying to close in terms of the communication between you and the other parent because this is a yellow card because this represents the solar plexus I do feel like there could potentially be some healing um, in you know being able to co-parent co-operate um, you know with the other parent uh, we have um, who is this? We have, um, who is this? Oh, Calvin Richardson. Um, and this is called, what is this? Oh, it's called Heaven. Okay, so maybe you all are being um, instructed, given some sort of divine intervention, maybe some sort of download. Maybe there will be some sort of, you know, dialogue between you and the other parent. Where you all will be able to connect maybe you're receiving some sort of messages via your dreams from your ancestors people who have you know transitioned uh into the spirit realm could be coming through in your in your dreams for some of you maybe you have a child that's nine years old i do feel like communication uh, with the other parent is going to be um, there's going to be an opportunity or a window of opportunity to heal it through communication maybe somebody is waking up maybe somebody's getting some sort of you know clarity some sort of illumination because that yellow also deals with the sun that shines within you know and the sun is very illuminating it's very healing it's very um, it represents like truth illumination clarity expansion of the mind so let's tap in bottom of the deck look at that domestic harmony so and now we have 46 so this is 10 so there was some sort of ending you know maybe there was a family dynamic a partnership and I feel like this love ship ultimately ended you know and that's why we saw you know with like a tattoo you know some of you felt scarred you know but this person was brought into your life and you theirs to teach one another um, valuable lessons you know we all meet people you know not by accident we meet them because there is something within that person that can help heal something within ourselves and with domestic harmony I feel like because there could have been an ending of a connection there is an opportunity now to change something so something you know positive can come from this experience even if the two of you have separated and gone your separate ways there can be this potential of domestic harmony and that's why I was picking up on cooperating co-parenting and this domestic harmony and I do feel like communication is what's going to bridge the gap and we have heaven here playing and this is by um, I still don't know who it's by But the name of the song is Heaven. Oh, there it is. Kanye Das. So I feel like because it's name of it is Heaven, I feel like this is divine intervention. To bring the two of you together. I keep hearing the word bridge the gap. And this is not to be in a partnership, but this is just to cooperate as partners, especially when it comes to the children. 
And so this 46, even though it's 10, it reduces to one. So this could provide some new beginning through communication, clear, concise, honest communication. That's why this, this card here is, you know, like I said, that represents illumination, clarity, truth. So there has to be that element of the conversation present or else there can't be harmony. But I do feel like, yeah, you know, there was a love partnership that ended. Something happened, which, um, you know, caused scars. I feel like some of you could have been traumatized. That song Terror by Jay-Z was playing. So maybe the children were terrified because maybe there was a lot of arguments, fighting. Maybe there was some sort of domestic um, altercations where police officers were called. So maybe the children could have been terrified in those moments where there was like these altercations, these screaming matches back and forth. And right now we have a Kelly Christ friend of mine. So this person could have been a really close friend to you at one point in time. Y'all could have been like, you know, had that dynamic homie lover friend. So we have, what did I say? There's going to be some sort of communication. And the number 33 represents harmony, represents love. So there has to be loving, honest, clear communication in order for this co-parenting to take place. Because I feel like in the past, there was a lot of dishonesty. There was a lot of discourse. And I feel like if there's an opportunity to come together to have an honest dialogue, which pertains to the children, I feel like keep it focused on the children. And this is for co-parents. I'm, I'm really picking up on parenting. Uh, the co-parents, you know, the Scorpios who are co-parenting and finding it difficult to have, you know, healthy dialogue with the other parent because it always turns into an argument even when you're discussing the children. But I do feel like there's some sort of window of opportunity. But I do feel the communication can heal a situation if there is honesty, if there's truth, if both people are coming in very balanced. And this is on the bottom of the deck, y'all. So this is what I was picking up, and it came out to confirm what I was feeling, what I was picking up intuitively. So we got a couple more messages. So we have individuality, and this is the number 11. So I do feel like the ne um, it was necessary for the two of you to part ways because you had to find the strength within yourself to stand erect. Individuality is independence. It's self-reliance. It's your ability to stand on your own and know that you could survive. I feel like a lot of you are single parents. And I feel like many of you, there was this family dynamic. There was this domestic situation and something transpired within that where the two of you went your separate ways. Because this 11 breaks down to two and I do see that there was a parting and you had to stand alone, erect, you had to figure things out in terms of parenting your children. And because this is the red card, I do feel like there was a lot of healing that was required. That's why that song, Like a Tattoo by Sade was playing. Because initially what came to me was like you were scarred, you know, the scars. You know, when I think of a tattoo, it's a lifelong um, mark on your skin. But I feel like the scars that you have endured, they were, they're lifelong. You feel like you're still carrying those scars but those scars are not meant to jade you or to hold you back they're meant to be worn as a badge of honor because nothing happens to you it happens for you and these were meant to make you stronger and to help you to not feel that you needed to be uh, codependent on another person to survive or to to raise your children I feel like you've learned uh, that your independence is the foundation for your stability, for your security, and even for some of y'all, your happiness. This red, like I said, deals with the root chakra. So that deals with your family, that deals with finances, career, that deals with your strength. Many of you could have been in codependent partnerships. But I do feel like because this is the number 11, many of you learned to stand on your own through divine intervention, through experiencing whatever whatever traumatic encounters remember that teaching and learning that were meant to teach you that you are strong enough to do 
whatever it was you needed to do to not only survive, but to thrive. So this is about courage. This is about passion. And we have all of playing, you are not alone. So that number 11 is letting you know that your angels, your ancestors with, with you the entire time. Remember heaven was playing by Kanye de Dross. So there was spiritual guidance. There was divine protection. Even though you may have felt alone, the divine was teaching you to stand. It's almost like taking the training wheels off a bike so that the baby can really gain and muster up the courage to ride without that extra, you know, without that extra protection almost. So that other person was almost like I said, like there was a codependent, you know, dynamic within a relationship. And you had to learn to stand erect. So 37, so you took some time out and you started to heal. I feel like a lot of you took some time out to learn, you know, learn more about yourself spiritually, started to tap into your intuition, started to tap in to the divine's downloads. It was just providing more insight. You took time out. So that was more so like you in hermit mode, learning, studying, you know, doing that reflection like it's almost like self-discovery like really in a space of solitude so when something ended you took some time out to not only heal yourself but to also tap into your higher self and this is how you mustered up the strength this is how you mustered up the courage to persevere to push through whatever fears whatever blockages and that, that 37 not only reduces to 10, which is speaking to the ending of the old you, but the beginning of a new you. So that time out was necessary. And I do feel like there was a lot of downloads coming to you. And it was because your angels and your guides were leading the way for you. Many of you were seeing synchronicities, whether through numbers, whether through feathers, finding feathers on your nature walks whether through seeing certain animal totems, whether through hearing certain songs repeatedly, whether through getting certain nudges, feelings, sensations, tingling sensations, your ears ringing, your eye twitching. Those were the divine, your angels, letting you know we're right here with you. Even though you was in the space of, you know, taking a moment to emotionally withdrawal or withdraw and the divine was letting you know like you're not alone you're not alone in this see that so you had to learn self-love so the 61 reduces to seven self-love was necessary and this is very much speaking to you listening to your intuition which was telling you to love yourself you know that partnership was not one that was healthy, not for you, not for what you needed in the partnership. I feel like you may have been giving more than you were receiving. It was lacking balance, which is why the communication now has to be balanced. You cannot appease to please. You cannot let anyone come in smiling and beguiling, just telling you things they think you want to hear. There has to be an honest dialogue in order for there to actually be some opportunity to heal the situation but I feel overall you had to learn to love yourself and I feel like you've learned to love yourself through some sort of creative project maybe through expressing yourself creatively expressing yourself artistically there was some connection to self which helped you to learn your value which helped you to learn your self-worth and I feel like you started to just get lost and move to the beat of your own drum. That time out helped you connect to you. And that 61 reduces to seven. That's all about the crown chakra. So that's downloads, transmissions, divine intervention. So during your time out, there was spiritual guidance leading you on this path to love yourself. Because when you love yourself, then others will see that not only will they see that, but it will be because you're vibrating self-love. When you love yourself, you radiate love, you vibrate love, you just exude a loving energy, which makes you more attractive 
which makes you more capable of attracting what you desire because now you're in a higher vibration. And we have right now um, oh, we have Pride Playing by Kendrick Lamar. So I feel like there was a lot of pride, a lot of ego, you know, that took place in this connection, which threw things off balance, which is why there wasn't no no meeting of the minds. There was this, you know, constant discourse, constant, you know, it was almost like a debate, you know. And so someone's pride wouldn't allow them to perhaps take opportunities to straighten the situation out. I feel intuitively you know there's going to be an opportunity to communicate. Maybe someone's pride is preventing them from communicating, from reaching out to heal. But I feel like you're standing in your power and you're moving to the beat of your own drum and doing things the way you see fit. You're doing things that's going to make you happy, that's going to make you feel good. You're not going to let someone come in and over burden you with their mess because you've been there did that and you've learned to stand alone stand erect stand in your power to stand your ground and you're loving yourself more now so intuitively you're going to be able to pick up on the fact if someone's coming in egotistical or if they're coming in to have a real open clear dialogue with you but you love yourselves now, Scorpio. So you're not going to you're not going to find yourself in any situations where there's imbalance because you've been working very hard to find balance. And all of these cards reduce to ten. Because we have sixty three, nine, this eleven is two. Because I'm breaking it down, I'm reducing it. So 63, 9, 11, 2, 37, that's 10, so that's 1. So this is 8. That's 10, excuse me, that's 10. So this is a new beginning. So you're on a new beginning, a new, you know, new journey here. Some of you could have been dealing with someone who, um, you could have been dealing with someone for 11 years when you guys broke up. Give or take, you know, maybe 12 even. Maybe you were dealing with someone for 12 years. Um, up to 12 years. Some of you could be 61 years old. Some of you could have met this person when you were 16. Some of you could be 37 years old. Some of you could have, like I said, a 6-year-old, a 3-year-old, a 9-year-old. Some of you were born in 1963. Some of you were born in 1973. For some of you, this person could have been born in Mar on March 7th or in the year 73, like I said. For some of you, you could have been born on November 16th. November 7th. But let me sh continue. So we have teaching and learning. It came right back out. So this is number 57. And that reduces to 12. So that's the 3. And the song that's playing right now is D-Train, Keep On. So the divine is telling you, keep on moving and shaking. Keep on learning. Keep on going and growing. You know, don't let anything discourage you. Like, especially, you know, situations that um, are difficult. You have to use those as tools to become stronger you know we all go through life learning growing 
and we learn from people that enter into our lives. And I feel like that was exactly the dynamic between you and this person, was they taught you how to love yourself. They came in to teach you to love yourselves because maybe some of you were overcompensating or self-sacrificing and even self-sabotaging in a relationship. I feel like this person definitely um, taught you to stand in your power, taught you to take your power back. But there was some sort of heartbreak in this dynamic, but I feel like it was preordained. But you keep on going, keep on growing. Don't get discouraged because this person was meant to come into your life. Don't let pride force you to hold on to resentment, animosity, or any low vibrational emotion. Because what that is, is that's like trauma bonding. You're bonding yourself to someone through the trauma that you experience with that person. And that's why you have to learn to cut karmic cords. That's why you have to learn to break the yokes. Something that happened in your childhood, which taught you to be afraid, you didn't feel protected, whether through some form of parental abandonment or the lack of feeling protected because of the absence of a particular parent. And you had to learn to stand erect. You had to learn to find your backbone, to speak your truth, to stand in your power. And that's what this person came in to reflect back to you, was how to stand erect. Many of you were not protected. Many of you had strained relationships with your parents or with your, um, with your, um, your guardians, you know, your parental guardians. Because some of you didn't grow up with your mothers and your fathers, which is why there was always perhaps this feeling of not being good enough, not feeling lovable. And the truth of the matter is that is the furthest thing from the truth. You are lovable and you are worthy. Perhaps there are some other situations that were happening within your parents, which led them to make the decisions to either put you up for adoption or to leave you with other family members because maybe they couldn't. I know for a lot of people back in the days, it was hard. It was difficult. It was tough. Some people struggle with drug addictions. Some people struggle with mental illnesses you may never have even known they were dealing with. And it's, it, of course, as a child, you don't understand that. And so that trauma kind of, it, it, it eats you up, you know, but... The truth is you all need to know that you are lovable. And some of you need to hear that even today. And that's why some of these relationships, connections, friendships that you all were latching on to, it was because you were looking to find love ships and connections where you would feel the love because you gave the love so freely, so freely that it could have been imbalanced. It lacked reciprocity. And that's why you had to learn to stand erect and learn to stand alone because the divine was teaching you, you know, that you are lovable, you know, and that's why the self-love is here because you learned that you're lovable. You learned that you are good enough. You learned your worth. You've learned your va your value. And it is, what, not, what time is it? Oh, okay. So this is what you were meant to learn. And the divine is telling you to keep on, you know, keep on going, keep on growing. You've been doing amazing. You know, this is beautiful, Scorpios. And we have creativity. So what did I say? A lot of you tapped into something creatively during those times out, you know, and this is the number three. And so this represents you finding and regaining your, your, your power because you started to tap into that divinity, which is creation. And this three represents, again, that that's the divine feminine energy, the divine masculine energy. Our divinity is creation, whether birthing life, new ideas, new ways of thinking, new projects. This is the energy that gave you the power. And this is the brightest, most beautiful color. That yellow, the sun that shines within, this is you knowing. And that divine is telling you, keep on. If you are being creative at this time, keep on. And the name of the artist is D-Train. So it's like keep on moving forward powerfully. 
Don't let nothing stop you. Nothing can stop a train. So keep on going. Keep on growing. Stand in your power. Plan, prepare, strategize, and take action. That three represents the ready, set, go vibration for me because it's about planning, preparing, and then, you know, moving forward, moving on, and going towards your dreams. This yellow represents some sort of clarity, illumination. I feel like this also is speaking to the sun. So there's some sort of abundance, some sort of brighter days ahead because of something that you've tapped into creatively. You've been learning a new trade, honing a skill with this teaching and learning right next to it. So many of you have been learning new skills. You've been mastering your craft. Powerful energy, Scorpios. I love it. So let's tap and tune in. Some of you could be like utilizing your throat chakra, communicating more. Maybe some of you have started YouTube channels. Maybe some of you are, um, you know, singers, artists. So we have on the bottom of the deck, goddess of the moon. So you're discovering things about yourself. Maybe there's going to be some truths revealed also. Some things that may have been hidden. What was in the dark coming to light. This also speaks to manifestation. Manifestation of those dreams. This 52 represents, you know, the number seven, which is about, you know, the crown chakra also. So you could be getting a lot of downloads. You could be having lucid dreaming. Pay attention to your dreams. Because there's some, some very important things that are going to be coming through via your dreams. I feel you all are highly intuitive right now as well. So let's tap and tune in Divine Spirit. What's coming and going out going on for our beloved Scorpio? There's going to be some decisions needed. I'm going to have to make a decision. Do I go left or right? And remember the Divine was saying Pride. The song Pride was playing by Kendrick Lamar. So this card... So we have Dorcha's spirit, and this is the number 32. So that represents five, which is also speaking to change. So I do feel like the angels are opening up an opportunity for you to, again, have some sort of communication that five deals with the throat chakra. And it also represents change. And I was picking up that there could be some estranged connection, dynamic relationships to the uh, other parent. And so now the divine, I feel like your angels and your ancestors are behind, you know, connecting you and the other parent to have open dialogue, to communicate. And we have um, Dave East playing every day. So every day, you know, I feel like the divine is saying that you're getting closer to you know, having this window of opportunity or this door of opportunity open up. And this, I feel, is something that's being, or, you know, this is being like conspired behind the scenes by your spirit team. Even the fact that this dove is flying through the door represents a rebirth. You know, it represents some sort of communication as well because the birds represent air energy. So that represents communication, open opportunity to communicate which is what I was picking up initially. And the bottom of the deck, we have contract. So this could be, like I said, someone you could have been in a relationship with, married to, but I do feel like there's some changes taking place. There could have already been divorce proceedings that have taken place, and this is why individual individuality is there, because something is ending. But I feel like I'm hearing the word amicably. Things can be handled amicably, because I feel like a lot of you have already been on this journey to not only self-discovery, loving yourself, learning to stand direct, find your power, but you are now more confident, you know, you have, you're more confident in yourselves and in your ability to do things on your own, you know, but this contract could also be telling you to, um, you know, we know during Mercury retrograde, you shouldn't do too much of traveling. You should definitely not be signing contracts because the communication can get blurred, skewed. Um, you know, things could, you know, get a little, um, they could get a little choppy during this time. So it's really good to just kind of, to, to, um, how do you say, what's the word I'm looking for, spirit? To delay things until after Mercury retrograde. 
I also feel like there's going to be, you know, maybe there's some truth coming in. I also, because this is the contract card, which is pretty much justice. Um, I do feel like Mama Ma'at is also saying that things are being handled fairly and justly for you because you've learned a lot. You've been on a journey of self-discovery and learning who you are individually without the presence of someone else, you know. And I do feel like, you know, with because this is the number six, there is a sense of balance now, harmony, you're in alignment. You know, there's no more confusion. And I feel like, you know, whatever you was blind to, whatever you didn't see in in the past, I feel like you see it now clearly. You know, there's a sense of, you know, understanding. And, you know, that six deals with the first eye. So you're able to see things intuitively now. And this download, you know, this, this 11 represents, you know, it's like a portal, you know. And so that's exactly what I was saying. You started to receive, you know, divine intervention. You start stop using your two eyes to see and started to listen to your heart. And that's probably why you've come to the conclusion that, you know, ending some sort of relationship or dissolving some sort of marriage would be the best thing for you. Because perhaps you've learned that there were some infidelities, lies all kinds of you know things going on behind the scenes and we do see these stack of books which always do not denotes knowledge learning it's, you know it's an energy of being um, being uh, being learned you know learned if you will you know and we have uh, Knights over Egypt playing by uh, the Jones sisters so Knights over Egypt you know so they the Knights over Egypt I definitely feel like, again, you know, the dark nights represent, you know, darkness. So there was, you know, some some shadow periods which required you to do some deep dives within yourself, internal work, you know. So let's tap in. Why is individuality here on spirit? Why is individuality here? Thank you. Okay. See that? So storm warnings. So you were receiving some download. You were receiving some communication from your higher self. With this 10, there was an ending. Some communication, some truths came out. Remember the contract was just there, which is Lady Justice, which is Mama Ma'at. So things hit the fan. You know, this is a tornado. So tornadoes are just as destructive as towers. And it represents the number 10. So that represents endings. But in this ending, truths were revealed. There was some sense of, you know, clarity that was given to you because the 10, even though it's an ending, it also represents a new beginning, you know, and emotions flared, communication was going back and forth. It was very choppy, you know, things got blown all out of control, you know. But I do feel like it was necessary. That's why the teaching and learning, it was necessary. It was like growing pains because you had to learn to get out of some sort of codependent relationship and learn to be more independent, to stand as an individual and not be overshadowed by someone else. You had to focus on you. This is about courage. My throat is getting blocked. So maybe someone even, you know, tried to control you by you know quieting your voice not encouraging you to be your best version of yourself or not encouraging to follow your dreams maybe they just had you running around catering to their needs wants and desires but that wasn't reciprocated but with this card here there was a lot of storm warnings and you received a lot of this is telling me there was a lot of you know there could have been a lot of red flags that were going unnoticed you know until they couldn't anymore, you know. But I feel like now you've, you've definitely received the downloads. And we have community. So your angel team, your spirit team was giving you divine intervention and spiritually guiding you on the path. The number seven represents your intuition. That's your crown chakra. So your pineal gland opened wide up. You know, it was wide open. First eye, wide open. And the truth came to light. And you had you had protection. You had guidance. You know? You had a spirit team. I'm hearing your spirit team were assisting you. Because I feel like for a lot of you, y'all was just, you know, some of y'all was kind of naive. You know, y'all were kind of like loving unconditionally. 
and not really paying attention to the red flags, not really paying attention. That's why Knights Over Egypt is playing because it's like the night, it was like there was a lot of things happening in the dark, you know? And this is, you know, I'm hearing the term shit's hitting the fan here. So all of the cues that your guides, your spirit team was sending you, you wasn't picking up on them. And, and that's why things had to get this bad. You know, even though it's storm warning, you know, a tornado is, is whirling through. So it ain't no warning. It's here. The storm is actually here. You know, the tornado can literally pick up a house and throw it to the next town. But I feel like communication, you may have learn something, heard something, saw something even, whether that's via online data, you know, but I feel like whatever it was, it really, it, 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 it disturbed you emotionally. You see that water is just like, you know, the waves are just kind of shaking everything. And we have um, Luther Vandross, if this world were mine playing, in the bottom of the deck, we have the community card. So, yeah, your ancestors put you on time out. They told you it's time for you to do some you work. Focus on you now, you know, because you were getting lost in that relationship. You were lost. And the other person wasn't even helping you or wasn't even attempting to try to help you find yourself. You know, the way you were loving your person, it could have been very enabling. And it could have been, you know, because you're supposed to love someone unconditionally, good, bad, and different, um, flawed or not. But you're not supposed to enable bad behavior. So if you see that someone's not reciprocating uh, things that you do for them, then you're supposed to pull your energy back so, as, so that they can come and balance things out. Because it has to be equal give and take. If you're on a seesaw, you can't be the e only one seesawing. Because if you're the only one on the seesaw, your ass going to be either on the ground or you're going to be up in the air. You know, whatever. However, depending on how height or heavy or light you are. So it's like it requires balance. So the divine was telling you, look, you need to sit your ass down for a moment and, and figure out this relationship thing, figure out this love ship thing, figure out this friendship thing. Because you ain't the only you ain't supposed to be the only one given, you know. So a lot of you needed to heal. A lot of you needed to take your power back. A lot of you, a lot of you needed to command and demand your respect. So why is time out here for Scorpios? Why is this time out here? Why is time out here, divine spirit? Thank you, spirit. And so we have rest and rejuvenation. Well, there goes your time out. And what did I say? That's emotional withdrawal. And that's also the number 10. 19 reduces to 10. So you had to take a moment to withdraw emotionally from a connection that was kind of like, it was almost like leaving you emotionally bankrupt. You didn't have anything for yourself because you was giving everything to everyone else. Whether it was family, friends, a lover, your children, your job, your household, your business. He was giving everything to everyone else. But if you see here, the divine is restoring you. Not only are you getting downloads, but he's also, he's giving you a, a spiritual restor. It's like spiritual restoration. Once you connect and tap into your higher self, once you ground yourself, once you start receiving those downloads, you become rejuvenated. Your spirit becomes rejuvenated because now you're taking the time out to heal yourself. You have to heal that self in order to learn to love that self. And when you learn to love that self, then you begin to know that self. And then you begin to know what yourself needs in a partnership, in a relationship. But this time, this time out, not only does it give you an opportunity to see how unhealthy your connections were, it also gives you an opportunity to take onus and accountability for the ways that you may have behaved in the partnership so that you can walk away from this moment of reflection with clarity you know you walk away with a new understanding of the self and what the new self is going to require moving forward so there was this rejuvenation of your spirit because you were giving too much you were doing too much And the bottom of the deck, look at that. Door to personal healing and happiness. And this is the number 34, which is 7. So you see what happens now when you take the time to heal thyself and you take the time to really take onus and accountability for what you may have allowed. It isn't about faulting 
yourself or faulting another person. It's about just merely looking at things more critically, more, more, um, more honestly, and not being in a space of pride, ego, and even, you know, um, anger, resentment, where you're just like pointing and faulting others. It's about also looking at the things you could have changed within the dynamic. We can't change nobody else. We could only change ourselves. And that's all that matters here when you're in a space where you're taking a time out. You got to worry about what you did wrong. It ain't about saying, oh, well, he did this spirit and uh, angel, you know, this one did that. You know, the divine sees all. You needn't worry about who did wrong to you. You need to worry about what you, how you didn't love thyself, you know, and the ways that you can learn to heal thyself and change your perspective. There's a reason why there's 3737, because there has to be a change forever. Like, you can't just change for the moment. It's like this has to happen at a soul level, which is why you're on this, 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 in this space of time out. Which is why it's clarified by rest and rejuvenation. Because you had to change from the inside, you know. And you did. You did. And you're getting stronger. Look how strong this person is. You know. Look at the strength that they're exhibiting. Even in this, this um, position of meditating, of connecting. The divine is strengthening you, rejuvenating your spirit giving you the power and that's why they're opening up this door to personal healing and happiness for you because you've learned in this process to love yourself you've learned that you are a miracle and you deserve the absolute best period point blank and you've received them downloads you see things clearly you have clarity there is truth now you're not lying to yourself about what happened you're not painting a picture in a way where you're victimized. See that? Look at that. Look what flew out. Self-love. You had to learn to love yourself because you were in a relationship which broke your heart. You was, you was initially, remember, pride. So your pride, that song Pride was playing by Kendrick Lamar. But look at your reward here. See that? Your reward. So you've had to learn to love yourself because you were in a loveless relationship. I feel like this person broke your heart and I feel like in return, this left you feeling broken. But you did the necessary work because the 61 reduces to seven. So you started to get the divine intervention, downloads, transmissions from spirit, from your spirit team, from your angels via seeing animal totems, number synchronicities, hearing songs, whatever it was, the spirit started to communicate with you. They started to leave you feathers to let you know, don't give up. Continue your process of healing. What was I saying here? That this is what this is about. Healing. You had to heal from a broken heart. You had to sit in time out so that you could see things clearly. You know, when you go through things that are traumatic, when you experience some sort of, you know, some sort of tra trauma, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, physically even, you have to take time to heal that. You can't just keep on going and grow. You're not robots. And so the divine told you, sit your ass down and connect with your higher self. Sit yourself down and realize that you're human and everyone else is human that you're dealing with. And everyone's going to make mistakes. Things are not happening to you, beloved. They're happening for you. These experiences that you are going through are not meant to break your spirit or tear you down or destroy you. It's meant to help you build yourself back up. To learn to love yourself. You had to learn to love yourself. You had to learn your own worth and value. If you wanted others to see that and appreciate that within you. And that's exactly why you have this here. So that last person, that past person that broke your heart. Whatever came out from this storm warning. Whatever tower moment you experienced with this person. It definitely caused a ripple effect. It definitely caused some sort of, you know, um breakdown even if this is a family dynamic even if this is friends that you discovered weren't being honest or discovered they were you know backstabbing and gossiping about you behind your back 
Whatever that was that broke your heart, it definitely wasn't meant to destroy you. This number nine, this is speaking to you needing to change the way you're looking at this situation. You're a victim of nothing. What you are is someone who can transmute that pain into something powerful. What you are is a conduit of change. And we have Bobby Brown, don't be cruel. So in your, in your pride, some of you may have responded, lashed out to that person that you felt broke your heart. There was a lot of tears. There was a lot of crying. You know, maybe this person was being cruel to you after breaking your heart. You know, adding more insult to injury. But you still mustered up the courage. And you still, even though this heart is torn into pieces, you did everything you could to mend it back. And that's why this nine is here, because you've learned a lot about yourself. That's the highest number of change. That's a powerful number, powerful vibration. And it's because you listen to your higher self tell you to take these steps to heal. Take your attention off the heartbreak and focus on you. Focus on what you need, what you require. So some of you set up boundaries. Some of you made sure to not allow someone's lies and deception to throw you off course anymore. You started to pay closer attention to people's actions over their words because maybe someone definitely was a master manipulator with their tongues. But you've healed. That's the most important part of all of this is that you have healed. And now you're being blissed, rewarded. This is the blessings. Blossoming abundance is taking place. Why? Because the divine is saying, we recognize that you've been learning here. You've been taking this very seriously. That heartbreak you felt, remember that 57 reduces to 12. That 12 reduces to 3. So you've learned the teaching and learning from this heartbreak. Because the three of swords is what's coming to mind. This heartbreak that you've experienced, this was meant to teach you, teach you how to love yourselves, teach you how to stand up for yourselves, speak for yourselves. You know, now you're going to be rewarded because not only did you stand up for yourselves, but you listened. You were completely in alignment with your higher self and you've healed. You've been healing. You've been working on healing you. You've been working on becoming a better version of yourself you know and we have and we have who's this Maxwell gravity pushing to pull so yeah so that's what you felt like initially it was like you know you, you you're pushing and they're pulling it was like y'all was in on two different pages you know and I'm hearing two different books not not even the same book y'all was in two different books y'all wasn't on the same page you know, and I feel like, you know, whatever happened in the beginning, you know, things could have started out really beautifully. It was almost like a damn storybook, you know, a fairy tale, almost the way you and this person could have connected. But I feel like, you know, somewhere along the line, things, the lines got blurred. The connection was strained. But I feel like the divine has seen everything. And so you've been manifesting through something creative, learning some new skills. Maybe some of you started businesses, started to tap into your divinity of creation. And now this is going to render some sort of abundance, some sort of prosperity, some sort of success for you. And it's because you've worked for it. Bottom of the deck, we got yin yang here. Some of you have a twin flame coming in. But most of you have found your balance. This 22 reduces to 4. So this is the stability, the security that you all are coming into. This is a household. This is a family dynamic. This is the yin to your yang coming in, the yang to your yin. This is someone that could be, like I said, like a soulmate even. Maybe some of you just found harmony, just found your balance through something creative. I do feel like with that number four, I feel like your heart chakra now is is you're in equilibrium also emotionally. And you were able to do so 
in record time because you got lost in something creatively. Maybe school took your mind off of it, studying, learning something new, working on a business proposition. Like you just, you got lost. And I feel like you were, you were divinely guided to do so because the divine is like, look, it's time for you to start tapping in and working on your soul's mission. You know, you have a life's purpose. We all do. Some people never realize that or never discover what that is because they get distracted by all of the things happening around them and they don't really do that work. They don't really go within and take time outs as necessary. They don't really go into hermit mode because they always got to be where the action is, always got to be where the folks are, people are. I, it's like, you know, but for Scorpios, y'all, y'all are not the type that require all of that. And that's why you get a lot done. Because you do spend a lot of time alone. And you do work on yourselves. Scorpios go through many deaths in a lifetime. And we're always reinventing ourselves. Rediscovering who we are. Because anything not growing is dead. So if you're the same person you was when you was 25 years old and you're 36, there's a problem. You might want to do some reflection. You might want to do some soul work. And Scorpios, that, that I'm preaching to the choir because that's all you do is work on yourselves. That's all you do is reinvent. That's all you do is grow and evolve to become a better version of you because you have that part of life down pat. That's why you're the conduit of change. And the most crazy thing about it is, you know, we're fixed signs, but we do the most change. We change so much. That's like our, you know, that's almost like, I don't want to say our, I heard kryptonite <laughs> is, you know, people that come into our lives to trigger certain things about ourselves that might require change or need changing, you know, and it's a whole fight, you know, but we do do it and we do it frequently and often. And it gets to the point where some people just don't even recognize us anymore. And they start to look at us, you know with a strange look as if we switching up and it's like that's the whole point <laughs> you know we ain't switching up for the bad we switching up to you know to evolve to become better versions of ourselves but i digress you know but this yin yang energy here shows you're in harmony you're in emotional equilibrium i feel like a lot of you are also going to find or not even find but you're going to come in contact with someone that's on your frequency and I feel like you're going to have a very stable, solid connection, union. You're going to be on the same vibration, you know, not only emotionally, but communicatively. You're going to speak your love language. They're going to be emotionally intelligent because I feel like this person has also been doing their soul work. They've also been doing some sort of healing from past wounds, past traumas. And I feel like whoever this past person was with the gravity, they were kind of anchoring you. They were keeping you from your greatness. They were holding you back. They were kind of like, you know, um, blocking your blessings, delaying certain things the divine was trying to give you. And I feel like you had to see that for yourself. You had to know that, you know. Why is creativity here? Hey, baby girl. Hi. Hi, Katana. Hey, baby. See that? So we have deceit. When I said somebody was blocking your blessings and, 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 you know, kind of not assisting you with your creativity, look at this. And we got the, this is the, the devil, deceit. So there's some deceptive energy here that was trying to convince you that you weren't creative, that was trying to perhaps use you, you know, use you because, you know, maybe you made them look good. But this deceit here, this also could represent self-deceit, self-deception. You know, maybe some of you are not seeing something clearly in terms of what you could pot potentially be doing creatively. Maybe there's someone around you who's trying to learn what it is you do, how you do it, so that they could take your ideas, steal your ideas. Because he's holding something here. So this is like manipulation. I got to get another card for this because this is very strange. And this is like deceit. This is envy. This is the number seven. So the seven deadly sins is the first thing that's coming to mind. And then we have Nas in common, sixth, sixth sense. 
Say hi to the people. Hi. Please don't mess up the video. I got to put her down. She's crawling all over me. But sixth sense. So the divine is telling you to be listen to your intuition when it comes to people coming around or inquiring about whatever it is you do creatively because they're being deceptive. I feel like this is not someone you could trust. This is someone who's trying to steal something from you, manipulate something. You know, you want to see the wand? You're so inquisitive. She just, she's just as nosy. She wants to see the wand. What is that device, Grandma? <laughs> Don't, oh, you like that? But we're going to get, see, anxiety. Someone's trying to get up in your head when it comes to something creative. So you have to be mindful. Use your intuition. I don't feel like this person, no, you're not going to play with my wand. Everything isn't a toy, sweetheart. Go play with your toys. <clears throat> so yeah, let's let's get one more card. I got to get one more card because we had anxiety there. So somebody's definitely coming in and they're trying to manipulate your emotions and your energy. And you have to be very in tune. Maybe you'll see it because, you know, like I said, that yellow definitely speaks to illumination. See this? Someone's trying to steal something from you. We got financial constraints. So maybe somebody's going through something financially and they're trying to come around you to figure out how to get money from you. How to steal something from you, whether it's an idea. But look at this. How do you go from all these happy cards? And this is someone who's very much... Um, this is a very demonic entity, energies, like devil energy, jealous, envy. This is someone that will try to dupe you. This I'm hearing the word greed. And it's somebody's really like financially, they're, they're going through it. They're going through some tough times financially. And I just get a sense that somebody's trying to steal your ideas, some creative ideas. So you have to be mindful not to share your business, what you're doing, how you're doing it. Because somebody definitely is coming around trying to steal something. And they see that you are like very successful. And it's something that you've learned, something that you've been mastering. And they're trying to wiggle their way in to learn something you're doing. Because they see you made a money. Look at this cornucopia. So there's definitely, you know, maybe the divine is saying that this person from the past, someone you was dealing with, maybe friends, fake friends, frenemies, family. Maybe this is how you stopped uh, focusing on this low vibrational energy was by tapping into your divinity. You are Empress Energy, so you are creative. You are the divine feminist, so you're loving, you're nurturing, you're caring, you're kind, you're abundant, you're successful, and you know how to manifest. You're a master manifester, and these individuals know that. And they're stuck in a low vibration because this, this is the feeling of entitlement. This is the feeling of people like seething at your ascension, at your growth, at the abundance that you have. You obviously are coming into something uh, you know, some sort of rewards. This is the harvest card. Carnocopia is one of the best cards in this deck. And this is number 11. So by you mastering the art of self, you know what I'm saying? By you making the appropriate decisions to love yourselves, heal yourselves, you now know what you ought to go out in the world and vibrate, how you should show up in the world. And so I feel like you've learned so much about yourself on this journey, Scorpios. And now there's this abundance, this prosperity, this success that's coming in for you. You're getting this harvest. And I feel someone who's struggling financially. Someone who's very low vibrational, very jealous, very envious, feeling very entitled. They're going through something because remember karma. Karma shows up when people, you know... It, I mean, it's just the laws of the universe. You know, universal law is what you put out and you get back. And I feel like there's a reason why you have... Look what's showing up on the bottom of the deck. So not only do you have carnucopia, remember I said you also have, you know, um, love coming in. Because you had that yin-yang card. So someone's coming in to deceive. Someone's coming in to play some games. They're trying to manipulate. But you have to remember that this the work that you've been doing. And remember, we had communication here on the bottom of the deck. And then we have love partnership underneath. So you're going to be in vibration with someone. This is like a spiritual union. That 33 is the number. You know, that's the vibration of love because it reduces to six. 
So you think of the Six of Cups, I mean the Six, which is the lovers rather. Um, but this here is what you have coming in. This is the blessings. You know, this is the rewards. Someone sees that and they're coming in trying to bring this heaviness. This energy does not vibrate with this energy, this dark energy. So someone's coming in trying to dim your light, you know, trying to block your blessings. And they're going to delay them. As long as you stay in, in, in you know, that energy, it's, it's going to be delayed. And that's what I was picking up before that card even fell out. So let's tap in. Let's see what's going on. We got, um, we got Nas, got yourself a gun playing. So, mm, so gun, guns are, you know, means of attacking, physical attacks. So I feel like y'all need to like, for some of you, the divine is telling you protect yourself. I'm not going to tell you that the divine is telling you go out, shoot up people. But I'm definitely feeling like divine is saying with that, got yourself a gun, protect yourself from that energy. And you know how to do that. Setting healthy boundaries, not communicating frequently. If somebody calls you talking about, oh, I need X, Y, and Z. Can you help me with this, this, and that? It's like, nah, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you have to be mindful because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get right back into your vibration after you've done everything that you needed to do to heal yourself. So they're coming back to play you because some of them got played for Boo Boo the Fool. So someone who was, um, who may have, like I said, left the connection, you know, the connection or relationship or friendship, played you with other people that they knew didn't like you. You know, family members who was talking crap, now they sitting around. The same people they was gossiping to is now gossiping about their ass because that's the way it works. There's no loyalty in, in, in snakes. They have no loyalty to one another, to others. Like, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? The bottom line to them is bite. <laughs> you know, lie, deceive. But this here, somebody got played and so they trying to come back because their funds ran out. They got played by somebody, some snakish energy. They're trying to be creative in how they come to you. The divine is telling you, look, you've already learned that lesson. This represents the world card. This is your ascension, your evolution. This is you gaining a better perspective or a new perspective on life, gaining a deeper, more profound understanding and knowledge of self. You're in spiritual alignment. You're wiser. And this person here, they done got played because they was playing with somebody who was not playing with them which is you and so you took the necessary steps to part ways to set up boundaries and to not entangle yourself with their energy and now they're doubling back because they see you're ascending you know you got your mind on your money and your money on your mind so you wasn't even focusing on this person you was focusing on growth you was focusing on your career on your business on regrouping revamping this person was an attention whore very immature Required a lot of attention from other people, other things. And that's what drew the wedge. But you had to build what was destroyed. This says always be building. So don't, when you're not building, you're destroying. So the divine was reminding you to build whatever they destroyed. Whatever this tornado picked up and destroyed, crumbled, crushed in the process. Always be building. Don't focus on the problem focus on the solution this attention whore destroyed what you thought y'all were building and whether it was an empire whether it was that you know that family dynamic <clears throat> excuse me this person is now realizing you're not like anyone else you're rare but they're still coming in with a very heavy energy they're still coming in with a low vibration because they're still needy and that's who you always was to that person someone for them to lean on Someone to save the day for them. Someone to get them out of a tight squeeze. Meanwhile, back at the day, back in at the ranch, it's like, were they that to you? There was no reciprocity. So they're coming back with the same, oh, I need, can you? You know what I'm saying? We got, it was all growing pains. And that's exactly what I was saying. You had to go through this to learn your worth and value. You had to go through this to learn how strong you were. Now you're going to attract someone who's on your vibration frequency, someone who's also learned, someone who's articulate, intelligent, not only communicatively, but even emotionally so. Empath, I feel deeply. Many of you are empaths, which is why you was very much helping this person, because remember, we had teaching and learning. So as I said, not only will you be the student, you'll also be the teacher once you learn. 
you know what I'm saying? People come in to teach you, but you also are teaching them in the same process. And the whole point is they have to be able and willing to notice that as well. Notice their flaws. Notice things they should work on. And we have right here uh, Q-tip playing, barely in love. So, yeah, you wasn't in love. Some of you thought you were. You could have loved the person, but you weren't in love, you know, because it says barely in love. How could you be in love with somebody that's not... Um, treating you in a loving manner so i feel like you're in love with the idea of love but you weren't in love you know what i'm saying it was barely love if that <laughs> but empath yeah empaths you all are empaths so you feel this person's pain deeply which is why a lot of you stayed as long as you did because you felt in your your spirit how broken this person was and for some of y'all y'all was trying to help this person heal he's trying to help heal them look at this the divine is telling you make your next move your best move because it's very possible for you to get stuck on some sort of emotional roller coaster ride or in some sort of you know um, repeating cycle, and we don't want to be repeating anything. We want to learn and move on. Remember, D Train was saying keep on. So even if this person comes back communicating to you, doesn't mean that that's the ticket to rekindling or reconciling. That just means that you know let's let's work on having better dialogue, better communication. On being more respectful, on, you know, um, not the word amicable, but like, like, like being more, I can't even think of the word right now. When it comes to me, I'll think of it. But with this, make your next move your best move. <clears throat> the divine is definitely instructing you to, you know, you have an opportunity, a window of opportunity to, um, to make a giant change, like a huge change in, you know, some sort of um, steps towards parenting with this other person. Because remember, parenting is here. So this is about, you know, making the right decisions, you know, not just moving without planning, preparing, strategizing or without thinking about the whole picture or all parties. Maybe some of y'all are thinking about physically moving. And if you move, the further you move, the further away your child will be from the other parent. You know, whatever this is, there is a door or a window of opportunity opening up. I feel like there's going to be some communication. And the divine is telling you to make your next move the, your best move. So this requires some analysis. This requires you to, you know, go within to, you know, meditate, contemplate, get things straight. Okay. And we have um, always be building here. So make sure that you're, like I said before, that you're building and not destroying. Um, always be building is about to, you know, this is what's on the bottom of the deck. And we see here something was destroyed. So you are in the process of rebuilding yourselves, be rebuilding, you know, your uh, foundation, you know, which is beautiful. And we have um, Tina Marie singing Ooh La La La. So, yeah, always be building. I feel like um, you're rebuilding, you're rebranding, you're restructuring. And I feel like it's going to it's going to be really it's going to be successful, whatever this is. Um, I feel like you're in a better place, a stronger place mentally, emotionally, you know. So why is um, this 11 here in storm warning? We have toxic behavior. See that? So the toxic behavior. There was a lot going on. Remember I was saying there was a lot of red flags that you weren't paying attention to. But I feel like things hit the fan. And this is what led you to become an individual when you were in a couple. When you were in a partnership. Now there's this individuality. You're learning how to be alone. The divine is telling you to block whatever, whomever, you know, access denied. So there was a lot of um, blockages here. I feel like you had to set up a boundary also. You know, and I feel this goes here. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to double up messages. We're going to just put it there. So with toxic behavior, there was a lot going on. As we see, you know, there was a lot happening behind the scenes. And I feel like you definitely discovered some things that were being hidden from you. And this led to some sort of tower moment. This led to some sort of ending. But I feel like ultimately what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And even though something was destroyed, you're building. You're always building. So this is about building your self-respect, building your self-esteem back up, building your finances back up, your security, and, and learning ultimately to be independent, to be, you know, to stand in solitude 
with yourself, you know, and and um, enjoying it, you know. And with this access denied, this is you taking the time to go into that hermit mode to emotionally withdraw. So you have blocked people, places, things out that were not honoring your highest good. I feel like your angels and your ancestors were also blocking certain people out of your lives so that you could do this internal work without distractions so you've definitely said look i'm taking the time out and you started to get you know rejuvenated by spirit started to receive the download started to see things more clearly and we have this world card here so this definitely is showing you know that you have completed a cycle this is going through enormous change but this also speaks to a beautiful bright future that's ahead of you because you've come into alignment, you've gained a different perspective, you're seeing things more clearly. And it was because you've gone through major pain, loss, you've learned a lot about yourselves. I feel like you did a lot of soul work, a lot of healing, and you've been able to identify, um, you know, why you would be in relationships where there was lacking reciprocity and why you weren't focused on loving you or even demanding people love you because you were lacking that self-love that self-respect but i feel like with this world card you've learned and healed some past traumas childhood traumas whatever you've experienced in your past maybe some of you also like i said were dealing with you know absent parents you didn't grow up with your parents could have been foster children could have been adopted so you always walk through life feeling not good enough and always seeking to be loved. So you may have accepted mistreatment and mistaken it for love, you know, because you didn't really fully have a, a, a healthy understanding of what love was. But now that you've taken that time out, you know exactly what love is because you've tapped into your higher self and your higher self has let you know what you should and shouldn't accept how to set healthy boundaries, how to not allow people to railroad you, overpower you, control you. You've learned that. And so now there's this sense of a higher, you know, respect or deeper respect for yourself. You've definitely come into spiritual alignment, taking that time out. Look at this. We got a happy house, happy spouse just flew out. So there was happiness once in a part of, once upon a time in this connection. I feel like that's probably what hurt the most is that there was no forewarning. There was no warning at all. There probably wasn't even an apology for some of you or even an acknowledgement of your broken heart, you know. And so that required you to really do some deep dives because some of you weren't even, you know, given the respect to have, you know, the, the conversation, if you will. You know, but this happy house, happy spouse is what you're ultimately looking for. You know, you know what you deserve. And you're like, you know what? Not only does the other person deserve to be happy, I deserve to be happy. So that's why we have happy house, happy spouse. This isn't just about happy wife, happy life. Nah, the husbands, you know, the masculines have to be happy. Everybody got to be happy in order for the house to function properly for there to be balance. And so I feel like you weren't happy in that connection. That's why Q-Tip was saying barely love. It was, bare lo ba it was barely a loving connection. That person was in love with whatever stability, whatever you were providing. But they didn't even appreciate the love you was giving because they was going out looking for love in other places. In all the wrong places. But here you are. You still are staying hope, you know, hopeful and optimistic. You could have been praying, wishing, and hoping you know, on something new too during this time of reflection, of introspection, you know, speaking into the ethers, saying your prayers, calling in your angels and guides and telling them what you desire, that you desire and require a, a equal give and take in a relationship, a love ship in this. Why? Because you now know your worth. You love yourself enough to know what you deserve. You love yourself enough to know, you know, you have to set your standards higher that you are a blessing. Always be building is here. So you want someone who's always going to invest the same as you. You want someone that's going to be your homie, lover, friend, someone supportive, someone who also is family oriented. 
that wants to build and grow a legacy that's not just looking for a fun time. So why is, um, okay, did something flip? So we have teaching and learning and blossoming abundance. Why is teaching and learning and blossoming abundance here for Scorpios? Thank you, Spirit. And I just saw a fiery wall of protection. So you all are divinely protected from this energy here. I just saw Archangel Mikael, fiery wall. So we have no reciprocity, only take, take, take. So that's, that's what you had to learn. You had to learn your worth and value. Because a lot of you was letting somebody just kind of like walk all over you. You know, you wasn't demanding your, your, what you needed. You wasn't asking of this person what you required, but they was getting what they required. And so this was about you learning how to stand erect, how to stand in your power, how to demand what you require. And because you finally took your power back and you learned those lessons and you healed your heart chakra and you've released the pain and the agony you know, the agony, agonizing memories of, you know, your childhood or any trauma you may have experienced. Now there's this reward, blossoming abundance. This is the divine taking note of the work that you have been doing. And you've gone all the way, you know, to now being able to listen to your intuition, you know, to be more discerning. And someone is getting a memo a little too late. No one in this world sees me as you do. I feel special in your presence. This could be the bullshit that somebody runs on you. Because we have this deceit card here. Along with financial constraints. So somebody's just coming back, clawing back to you. Crawling back to you. Because they're going through some financial constraints. And they think that just saying this bullshit is going to get them back in your good graces. No one in this world... And remember, we had communication, but we also have caring communications and carnucopia. So this is the divine saying, look, if you hold tight, I could absolutely bring in somebody that's going to match your fly. Because I know that's what you've been asking for. You know what I'm saying? Someone's trying to cause you confusion with their words. And you have to be discerning. Because someone is not telling you the truth. Someone is just saying what they think you want to hear or because they know you're empathic or compassionate. But this deception card next to financial constraints, that's not a good energy. That's somebody trying to conjure up some sort of plan, scheming, scamming, plotting, trying to backstab you. Why? Because they see you shining. Something you're doing is in the limelight. Whether you have a business, they see your sales are booming. If you have a YouTube channel, they see your views are popping. If you have anything going on for yourself, they may see you driving in a new car. They may see you post a picture about purchasing a new house. They feel like you got money and you can save them. And instead of coming in honest and transparent, remember those were the words I used in the beginning. If someone comes in honest and communicating to you, in an honest way being genuine then of course you can you know things can repair in terms of the communication but if somebody coming in with this energy manipulation this is what you just got finished healing from you don't have time for that who got time for that and this person may use these words and remember the divine look at that there goes archangel Mikael, fiery wall of protection so the song that's playing right now with music is my sanctuary. I feel like the divine is telling me to listen to the song. So look at this. The name of this song is called Do What I Gotta Do. And it's by Ralph Tresman. What did I just say? Somebody going to do whatever they got to do to try to get you to give them what they need. Even if it means saying no one in this world sees me as you do. Even if it means pulling on your emotional strings. This person knows that you all are empaths. They know that you care entirely too damn much about other people. They know that you could feel, you know, you feel other people's pain. And so they're playing on that. The divine is telling me, listen to the song that's playing. Music, why is music is my sanctuary? Yes, some of you could be musicians because the creativity card is there. But this is also speaking to the clear audience. And with this song, Do What I Gotta Do by Ralph Tresvent, this person's gonna do what they gotta do to get what they need. Meaning, they're gonna say whatever they need to say to get what they need. Because nothing has changed with this person. But the divine here, Archangel Mikael, fiery wall of protection. You are protected. Why? Because you're highly intuitive. 
because you're tapped into a higher frequency. So why is this? Um, okay, thank you, spirit. So look at that. What did I just say? Play a player from the Himalayas. So the player, what does the player do? They run game. You know what I'm saying? If you ever heard a pimp talk, they'll talk your ass in circles, which is why they got holes on strolls. Because they know how to bedazzle and, and, and mind fuck you. This person is trying to play games. They're playing games. They're still in this low vibrational energy. The divine is telling you, look, show forgiveness is for you. So forgive those who know not what they do is what I'm picking up. With this Love Jones, they're trying to use old tactics. You know, whether it be mentioning movies, mentioning songs, mentioning things that's going to like, you know, spark some sort of nostalgia within you. You know? They're going to do whatever. They're going to use their little manipulative, tap, manipulative tactics, which is why this deception card is here. Look at this. He's manipulating. He's looking. He's watching. He's clocking. Don't be surprised if this person's watching you. And the divine is telling you, listen to your intuition. Even though this 25 might, makes me think of the seven deadly sins, this is also the divine telling you, listen to your intuition when it comes to this person. Because they're going through some sort of financial constraints. Whatever they are going through has nothing to do with you. You can show forgiveness, but you ain't got to be peeling dollars off for anybody. Let's get one more message to my spirit. And that's why the divine is telling you, look, make your next move your best move. Don't get all caught up in this merry-go-round of mind fuckery again thank you see that you've experienced many life changes congratulations so you've you've ended things with this person you're making a decision to keep it moving you're making a decision to do what you have to do and that's what you need to do is keep on moving forward because you've gone through the transformations you've definitely taken this journey seriously you haven't been playing with this. This person hasn't learned a goddamn thing. They still on the same bullshit. They still in a low vibration and they see you shine and they see that you have a lot of abundance coming in. They see things are happening for you and it's not just happening because you're cute. It's happening because you've taken the time to work on yourselves, to rejuvenate your spirit, to heal, to grow, to learn from the mistakes that you've made in the past. That's why you get this card. You don't just get this card. You don't the world card doesn't just show up. If you didn't do the work, that's not how the messages come out. It comes out when your energy is vibrating on that of one who has changed. The energy is going to pick up the energy of the collective and the collective for most of you, not all you have been doing your soul work. This past person that's going to try to re-enter your life during Mercury retrograde, which is the time when past people come back to trigger you to see if you've learned, to see if you've healed, to see if you've learned from the past. Remember, teaching and learning. So you have to exhibit what you've learned. You have to show and prove. You have to apply what you've learned. You know what I'm saying? The application of knowledge is wisdom. So you have to show that you've become wiser and you absolutely will. With you've experienced many life changes, congratulations. This is your ancestors congratulating you because many of you already are going to be able to peep game. You're going to see exactly who this person are, is. You're going to see exactly what they're doing because it's nothing different from what they've been doing. That's the problem bet between people who think they're smarter than they are, who use manipulation and who think that they could get one past a Scorpio, you're absolutely ridiculous. You're retarded. Scorpios are highly intuitive. We ain't thinking about the words you're saying. You may be able to, to dupe people with your words or bamboos with people with your words. Scorpio's always feeling energy. You can't lie. You can't lie when it comes to energy. Your energy is your energy, and that's what we pick up on. So trust what you feel intuitively, Scorpios. A lot of you are coming into new love. See this? Look at this. I'm, I'm going to show you the narrative. This person is going to say all the things. They're going to try to pull all the stops. And it's all playing on your emotion. They're trying to pull on your emotional strings. Last message was, nobody in this world sees me as you do. I feel special in your presence. This one is now saying, I love how you love me. Notice how everything is pertaining to them. Even in them coming back, they still talk about how you make them feel. Never in their communication... Are they saying anything about how they feel about you? You know what I'm saying? Peep game. Look at this. What did I say? That player done got played. The grass was greener on the other side because they watered it. So whatever they done left you for, whatever they broke up this family dynamic for to go and, you know, water the grass, they realized that grass was plastic as hell, superficial, artificial, and it didn't grow. It was just, it was plastic. 
So it was fake. It was a fake connection. It was built on lust, not love. There was a lot of lies and deception. Whenever you leave one relationship covertly and, and, and deceive one person to go start a relationship with somebody else, that, that situation ain't going to develop into something healthy. It's not going to grow because you're, you're abandoning one situation without ending it amicably or, you know, um, in a healthy way, you know. So whatever you're trying to build somewhere else, all you're doing is like literally spiting. You're cutting your nose off to spite your own face. So now this person got to double back and apologize. But they let their pride and their ego get caught up. They was already seen as attention whores. They was needing attention from other people. And the divine is telling you, look, a thing can only distract you if you give it your attention. So pay this person, pay this situation, none of your attention. Pay it, no, never mind. Like, literally. Like, don't give it any of your attention, any of your energy. You've experienced many changes as is. You've gone through enormous change to fall for this okie doke. You know what I'm saying? You've learned entirely too much. Maybe somebody who's been faking it all this time will fall for that same okie doke. But not somebody who's been doing all this work. Not somebody who's taken the time to heal themselves, to reflect, to do self-analysis. They're not going to get tripped up and trapped by somebody playing the same games so pay attention and right now we have more than a woman angie stone so for many of you all y'all are more than women you know what i'm saying you're more than just a woman you are super women out this bitch and you men are super men like you are in your power right now you're not just a mother you are a super mom you going above and beyond that is your focal point your children came out first parenting so you've had a difficult time co-parenting with whoever this other person is. And why? Because they've been in la-la fucking land. Remember, ooh, la-la-la was playing by Tina Marie. This person's in la-la land. They still don't get it either. And you don't have time to sit there and, and, and teach them. If they're not picking up the jewels the divine is sending for them, then what, can, what the hell can you do? But this person is, is still stuck on stupid, still feels entitled, still feels like you owe them something. And you have to be able to discern that. All right. But that is your reading, beloved Scorpios. I hope that this reading resonated. Um, definitely hit the like, share, the subscribe button if you feel that the messages um, resonated with you. Also, hit the bell notification so that you know whenever I upload. If you are new, I hope that you um, stay a while. I hope you stay a while. I hope you liked what you heard. And if you are returning, you already know what it is, beloved. It's love is love is love. I thank you all. I appreciate you all. I do have an, an announcement because, you know, my energy is like, um, are you sure you ready for these personals next month? I have to, I, I'm, I'm going to have to get back to y'all on them personals because a part of my spirit is saying do them, where, whereas the other part of me is feeling like, it's not time. So I really just, I don't know if it's the murky retrograde that got me feeling a little imbalanced when it comes to that or not even imbalanced, but unsure when it comes to that. But I don't want to go into anything half-assedly. So I definitely want to make sure that I'm in my right mind, that I'm going into it confidently. So um, I don't know if I'm going to start personals in October. Um, maybe we'll see what happens. Let me see how I feel. Um, it could be, like I said, just murky retrograde making me feel like to just, you know, take a take a chill. You know what I'm saying? And I do want to, you know, uh, be obedient to the messages that have been coming in in terms of like unplugging and not just being all into these electronic devices, computers, phones and just in this virtual reality. I do have to, you know, connect and tap into my you know, to myself, to my higher self and getting tuned in touch with nature as well. So if I'm always doing readings, I'm going to be like literally trapped in this virtual world. And I'm just not that person. So I, I may have um, spoken too soon. You know, we're going to we're going to see how I feel when October comes. Um, but I definitely wanted to be honest and transparent about that. I know that I've been getting a whole lot of requests um, and I will keep those requests and will still do them in the order that I receive them, uh, you know, because, you know, that's what I said I was going to do initially. But um, I just don't know about this October start date. OK, so I do want to be honest about that. But I do appreciate you all for tuning and tapping and I will keep you posted if anything changes between now and then. Um, I do feel like um, 
for a lot of you Scorpios, there's a lot of beautiful things coming in. And I feel like it's because you've done the work. You know what I'm saying? And we know you've been doing the work because this has been, you know, a very difficult time. But this is like you're, you're, you've transformed completely from the person that you were. And I feel like you have somebody going to, you know, try to come back. Uh, whether this is a lover, a friend, a fake friend, family members, people that did you dirty, they're going to come back and try to play on your emotional strings. And it's because they know that you are empathic and compassionate, caring, and that you have loving spirits and souls. Um, and they know you're loyal at the end of the day. But um, the bottom line is don't let anybody come back and pull your trigger. You know what I'm saying? They can't pull a trigger if it isn't there. So this is about owning your power, standing in your power, and, you know, remembering. Look back in reflection and see how far you've come. Don't let anybody take you back there. That's why the divine was like, look, make your next move your best move. Ashe. So thank you so much for tuning and tapping. Until next time, beloved Scorpios, love and light. Ashe.